what Ratchet and Clank do is um, they do a great job of making each world feel individual. You know, they don't reuse textures over and over. Right. And each stage has an awesomeness to it. Not each stage has a billion cars flying around it. Some will just shoot, throw a million enemies at you. You can't believe how many bad guys are coming at you at certain points in the game. There is just, um, mm. they can do a ton of chaos, and they do it a lot. So it doesn't, it's not, a, I keep referring to this, it's not, doesn't suffer from Bioshock syndrome in that the first hour is absolutely amazing, then it tapers off. It stays, um, visually amazing throughout the whole game yeah and um, even in the trailer you see that that big present is that you never really see shooter, the same thing yeah. over and over you see a lot of variation yeah. which is which i mean in all honesty all the ratchet and clank games have offered a, an immense amount of variation anyway you know and I, i'm glad you brought that up because this is one of the things that let me give out my graphics score my sure. graphics score was a nine it was a nine out of ten and people are saying this looks absolutely amazing why isn't this a 10? And the reason why I don't think it's a 10 is because of, I feel the title overall suffers from a lack of ambition in that mm. when you played a racket, Ratchet and Clank, there were a million different types of stages. And to be honest, there really isn't a whole lot. You don't get the old school, I don't know if you guys ever remember, they go 2D in some of it and it turns into a side-scrolling platformer when you used to play um, as Captain Quark or their, um, you, when you play as uh, Ratchet, he transformed into this giant robot and you're right. tearing apart cities and stuff. There wasn't a whole lot of those little amazing moments. The game was a very solid action platformer, but I think they really need to push themselves next time and give us more variety. You know, Let us see this engine do a lot more than just... Um, um, you know what the majority of Ratchet and Clank is, which you, is run and gun. Do you think that's because this is their first uh, outing with the Ratchet and Clank on the next gen system, or do you think that, um, you know, what what do you what do you think your re the reasoning is for the lack of variation in comparison to the other games? Well, I'm gonna say it's because they wanted to get it out this Christmas. It's their first, you know, attempt at making a game on the PS3, right. and I I really feel that there was. Um, the sense of we need to get some shit out there because, you know, the, the PS3 library is not that great. I think that given enough time and polish, because one of the huge missteps in this game is the fact that there's no multiplayer. That's been a right. given for the last three Ratchet and Clanks, and I feel that um, that should have been in there. You know, it should have been in there. We have already have the modes. You have the engine. Why aren't we seeing it? And I think it's because they um, tried to get the game. That was and... You know, what they have there is absolutely solid, but you've seen a lot more in past Ratchet and Clank games. All right. Moving on to sound, though. Sound is fantastic. You guys heard yourselves laughing, you know, just watching the trailer. <laughs> the voices in the game are great. They're the same cast that they've had so far. Um, you know, if you've played the past Ratchet and Clank, you jump right into this world. The voices are always hilarious. I love them. Um, and like I said, too, there's tons of enemies coming at you, and you can hear all of them blasting all around your room. Sounds fantastic in 5.1. It really has um, these epic moments where the score gets really huge, and, and then there's certain times where, you know, where there'll be like a techno score, and other times it's um, classical music. So I really like the variation in the sound. Um, sound for me got a 9 out of 10. I think it is fantastic for its subject matter. It sounds great. sounds cartoony. Um, there are a lot of parts where I laughed out loud while playing by myself, and I like that. Moving on to gameplay. Um, as I've mentioned before, gameplay is where I feel that this um, game lacks the most. What they have there is absolutely solid. The running and gunning is awesome. You know, the jumping between rails, all of those. But the real problem I had with the game was there wasn't a whole lot of variety in the missions like I'm used to. There are a few mini games. Ratchet does have his own little side quest where he's and control those little robots. Again, I don't know if you've played the past games, but he, like, controls a squad and sends the squad to do stuff. But that's really all Ratchet does in this game. He has a little side-based squad mission, and in the past games, he'd have that side-based squad mission. He'd have parts where he became a helicopter, and then he'd have parts where he turns into a giant morph robot. That wasn't there. Multiplayer isn't there. Um, so gameplay suffered a few points in that category. Gameplay, for me, got an 8 out of 10. What is there is solid and it's nice, and I have to give props to the six-axis controllers in this game. Um, there's a couple of stages where you get um, wings and you can fly around, and the six-axis controls are so tight. It, it really makes some of the stuff that I dealt with in Lair 
Um, it's a shame that I had to deal with it because I know the controller is capable of a lot tighter control scheme because this game demonstrates it. You know, the flying and you have mini missions where you control sort of like that. You guys remember that marble game Labyrinth where you tilt the, right. the board to move the ball. And the six-axis controller is absolutely responsive in it. The gameplay is super tight. It docks some points because Works of you know, a lack of ambition is what I say. <laughs> Works as um, intended. Uh, moving on to Fun Cycle. Fun Cycle is, it was, when I first booted up this game, I was so in heaven. I've loved Ratchet & Clank, you know, since the first game. Seeing what it looked like on the PS3 was absolutely amazing. I had so much fun with it that I couldn't stop playing it, and this turns into, you know, it sort of suffers from what a lot of the Sony games are suffering right now in that they're very short. You know, I beat this game in th three days, and... It probably took me about eight hours to bat to uh, bust through the whole game. Eight hours and to each me, day or over three No, days? eight hours total. Okay. And to me, that's slightly disappointing because Ratchet and Clank games have been known for being pretty epic in scope, and then I would dump several hours into the multiplayer, and the fact that that wasn't here, I think, really hurt the fun cycle. Fun cycle for me got an eight out of ten. It was an absolute blast while I was playing through, but it was just over too damn soon. You know, if then the next Ratchet and Clank that comes out, if they address multiplayer, if they add a little more variety, they don't need to change a single thing graphically. They don't need to change a single thing with the sound. All they need to do is add those little extras that we've come, you know, to know and love from the series, which I felt is really lacking on its first outing on the PS3. Um, an overall score for me, I gave the game an 85%. I think it's absolutely awesome. Um, Part of me has trouble justifying the $60 purchase because I know it's so short, but if you are a hardcore Ratchet and Clank fan, I think that this is a must-buy for you. If you're just looking for something kick-ass on your PS3 to show off your TV, I think that um, you know you should definitely rent it. Every PS3 owner should try this game, and if you've liked Ratchet and Clank in the past, you'll, you know, you'll absolutely love this version too. I have a feeling that this will actually be a big seller this holiday season because I feel like, especially as you kind of said it, um, it, it, it's kiddish enough that I think a mom and a dad would feel okay buying it for their 10 year old, but it's also obviously got some sort of appeal, not only to fans of the franchise like you, but to an older crowd, just because of its sheer awesomeness and graphics, um, that I would expect to see this one do really maybe, well over the holiday maybe, season. Maybe a crowd that's tired of chasing princesses. And I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not going to make a comment about <laughs> that because I'm it's pretty sure the Super Mario will Galaxy say. will fucking kick its ass this Christmas, but you know. Um, this is definitely one that I would probably throw on a little stocking stuffer list to have. You know, it's a it could be a cool one to have. But yeah. uh, you know, I, I would guess uh, you know that your your view is right on in terms of how I probably would have felt about the game as well. So uh, I, I will say that both you bitches need to experience it. You know, like I said, you can beat the game. Um, very, fairly I'm glad quickly, you can beat it in eight hours. Experience. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, at the rate that, that stuff, I'm consuming dude. games right yeah. there, I, eight hours has become That's my new perfect staple for me. For, <laughs> Uh, See the thing is the difference between us is I pay for so much of my shit. You know, you guys get comped a lot of stuff and I don't. sixty bucks for those experiences <laughs> Not is a little tough. Not everything. Yeah, I I understand. I I understand where you're coming from. So. Uh, depends on if your wallet's busting open or maybe yeah, you just want to rent not it. An but object to you. holidays coming up and gotta remember that, kids. You know, start. You don't have to put fucking socks and sweaters on your Christmas list, people. Okay, just ask for nothing but Best Buy cards. Or this year, I'm going all out on the Visa gift cards. That's what I'm gonna be asking mm. for for everyone because then it's like, look. You don't have to go to Best Buy. You don't have to go here. And I can use these cards anywhere. So just a little friendly reminder to all you folks that uh, are expecting a big fat man to come down your chimney pretty soon. So that was Ratchet Clank Tools of Destruction. Force gives it an overall 85%. And it will be up to you to figure out if this is a game you're going to try or this is a game you're going to buy. But thank you, Force, for doing that one. Now, Call of Duty 4.